Hey, thanks for joining us online today. We believe that Jesus wants to do so much through you and for you, and we'd love to hear about how he's working in your life. Please take a second to email your story to stories at rise-church.com. We hope this message leaves you feeling uplifted and encouraged. Enjoy. My wife and I are gonna put a bow on this series today. It's our relationship series. If you're a first time guest, um, we'll get you caught up very quickly. But if you want the full everything, you're gonna need to go online and and listen to all of it. Um, But week one, we kicked things off and we just said this, that um, this isn't a marriage series, it's a relationship series. So so really listen to this, that if we want healthy relationships in our life, we have to first get the most important relationship in our life right. And that is our relationship with God. We gotta put God back on the throne of our life. And you can go back and listen to that message to get caught up. And then week two, we said, if we want relationships to thrive, we have to learn to forgive. And the way that we forgive is by remembering how much we've been forgiven by God. And so it's so huge. Relationships will halt, will stop if you do not choose to forgive. And then last week, we just said that God created marriage and he designed it a certain way and we'll let the one that designed it define it. And so we're gonna do it your way, God. And we're gonna enjoy our marriage. We're gonna enjoy intimacy and come on somebody we're gonna have a little bit of fun can I get an amen Amen. today my wife and I are gonna teach on this topic how do you fight right and we call this series everybody wins because we believe this with all of our heart when we apply God's word to our life that in our relationships whether it's a marriage a friendship a parent with kid whatever it is that there does not have to be a winner and a loser that everybody can win. God, when you're the center of our relationships, we can all win. Can I get a good amen? Amen. 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 And so you wrote in some questions. My wife's gonna kind of walk you through that and tell you what this morning's gonna look like. Yeah, so we're looking at fighting fair in our relationships. And a lot of what we're gonna share today um, really applies to marriages, but honestly, you can take these things and it applies to your friendships, to your relationships with your children, to relationships with your parents, to coworkers, all of that. So it might feel like it's a little bit marriage, but I promise you, you can apply it to all of your relationships. So first thing we're going to do is look at a few questions that you guys wrote in. Then we're going to give you some practical things on fighting right in relationships. And then we're just going to speak to your heart on what God has taught us on fighting fair in our relationships. And really a common theme around the questions that you guys sent in was how do I have hope when I feel like my marriage is falling apart? How do I keep fighting? How do I hold on when really I just want to give up? And I want to share a story in the Bible with you. And this this story is probably more intense than even most of you have experienced in your marriage. But I love the perfect illustration of God's love here in this story. And it's the story of Hosea and Gomer. And I'm not going to read the whole uh, scripture. You could go and read it in the book of Hosea. It's a really beautiful story. So I encourage you to go read it on your own time. But in Hosea, Uh, chapter 3, Hosea and Gomer are married. And Gomer really had a tough life before their marriage, but they, God tells Hosea to marry her. They get married, they have children, and then Gomer decides that she's done. And she walks out on their marriage and she begins to go and pursue other relationships outside of her husband over and over and over again. And then Gomer hears from God, or Hosea hears from God, and God says, go. I want you to fight for your marriage. I want you to fight for your wife. And in Hosea chapter three, Hosea says, God ordered me start all over and love your wife again. Your wife who's with her latest boyfriend, your cheating wife, love her the way that I, God, love the Israelite people. So Hosea says, I did it. I paid the price of a slave for her and told her, no more, no more of this life. You're living with me and I with you. So Hosea fought for his wife. I can imagine that he felt so hopeless, that he felt like he wanted to give up, that he felt like he didn't want to hold on to that relationship anymore. But he goes and he fights for her first because he listens. He listens to the voice of God and he follows in obedience and he goes and fights for his wife. And this is just a beautiful display of the love of Jesus in our lives that we left, we strayed from God. And the only reason that Hosea could go and love his wife is because he had first received the love of Jesus in his life. So just like we stray from him, just like we have walked away from him, Jesus says, I'm going to leave the 99 and I am going to go and find you because I think that you're worth it. I think about this. I think about Jesus sitting in the garden and, and he's about to be hung on the cross and he's praying and he, and he literally says these words, hey God, if it's possible, like if there's another way, let me not go through this. But then he surrenders to the Father. And he says these words, but but not my will, God, your will be done. 
N- not what I want, what you want. And, and if you're in this place today and, and you think, man, like, I'm in a relationship and, and, and count it a friendship, count it a, a, a parent-kid relationship or a marriage, whatever you want to call it. And, and you feel like you're the one that's fighting and they're not. I promise you this, you're, you're never more like Jesus, like my wife just said, than when you're pursuing somebody that's not pursuing you. You realize that? You are never more like him because that's who we were. We were running from God. We were running from Jesus and he chased us down. He never, not for a moment, did he ever give up on you. I can sit across from, from, from couples in our church and I can see one of them's lost the fight, but the other one hasn't. One of them's ready to give up, but the other one's not. So what do you do? I get asked this question all the time. When do I stop fighting? When do I give up? They're not fighting. I am fighting. When do I just finally stop fighting? And I can't answer that for you. I can just tell you what I would do. And I can tell you what Jesus would do. I will fight for this woman until I got no fight left. Until she literally puts some papers in front of me with her signature already on them and there is nothing else that I can do. I've already purposed that in my heart. So if we ever go to that place, if it ever happens, if something ever goes down like that, I already know, God, this is what I have purposed. This is what I will do. Now, if I get in that situation, I don't know how I'm really gonna handle it. it might, I might, you might see me on the news. <laughs> But that's, that's the hope, and, 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 and the only reason we're able to fight like that is because the, the fighter, Jesus, lives on the inside of us. Amen? Yeah. You don't have that fight on your own. You, you're going to give up. Jesus is the fighter that will give you the strength to continue to endure. Yeah, absolutely. And I would just add that, like with Hosea, you have to hear from God. Yeah. You've got to hear from the Holy Spirit, and I promise you, he will answer you, and he will lead you in the decision that you need to make. And now we're not telling you, if you feel like you're in a dangerous situation, we're not saying, oh, just keep fighting, keep staying with it. Absolutely not. If you feel like you're in a dangerous marriage and you're not safe, we, we say go. You get out of that, we'll help you. You need help, you find any one of our staff members, we will help you get out of that. But if he's still there, if she's still around, and there's some fight left, come on, give it everything that you have. It'll be work, right? It's not gonna be easy. Like, I think often in times we just think, okay, if God tells me to do it, it's just going to be easy. No, you're going to have to fight for it. And I won't pretend like that I understand what you're feeling or what you're going through. We're not just up here saying, oh, just fight for it. It's going to be easy. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's difficult. I'm sorry that it's hard. But what I do know is what the Word of God says about my Father, about His character. And the Bible says that He is a healer. The Bible says that He is a restorer. The Bible says that He is a redeemer. And that He can step in and take dead things from life. So So the same power that lives in me and lives in you is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And he can step in and breathe life into your relationships. They may seem like they are so far gone, but God can restore. He is a restorer and he can step in and he can breathe life back into your relationships. But it's going to start with you stepping in and saying, I'm going to fight today. No more devil. I'm not going to allow you to take any more ground in my marriage. And I'm going to step up and say enough. And the fight starts with me today. And I promise you, Jesus is going to meet you in the middle of that fight and he's going to give you every single strength that you need to continue on fighting for your marriage. I promise you. So if you believe that, come on, let's give him a little more praise in here. I believe that he wants to bring some healing and some restorations to some marriages in this house today. I believe it. So come on. Next question. How do I fight? For my marriage when my spouse is not pursuing Jesus. And so many of you wrote in on this question, and I share that just so you know that you are not alone in this place. You are not alone. God sees you. He sees the struggle. He sees every tear that you're crying. And really what I would say to that is that we, we can't control our spouse. We cannot save them. We're not Jesus, but we get to be Jesus to them. We get to be a beautiful display of Jesus to them, and we get to res- uh, control our response to conflict. And I think that's a huge way that we can be Jesus to our spouse When we choose to respond with love, when we choose to respond with kindness, when we choose to respond with peace in the middle of a chaotic situation, 
That's Jesus, and he's the only one that can do that through you. The Bible says there is power in our words. We have life and death in our words, so we get to choose in the middle of conflict with our spouse. We can either continue to choose death and speak death over our relationships, or we can choose to speak life. And I promise you, when you do that, they will see a difference, and you will get to point them to Jesus. And this works in any relationship. This works in a friendship. This works if you're a, if you're a kid and your parent doesn't know Jesus yet. If you're a parent and your kid doesn't know Jesus yet. All of this applies to every single relationship in our lives. Now, in the context of marriage, in 1 Peter, this is what he writes. 1 Peter 3, verses 1 and 2 will be on the screen. And now let me speak to the wives. And, and I think if, if Peter was really writing this, he would say to the husbands as well, like just apply this to your life in however way you need to. Be devoted to your own husbands so that even if some of them do not obey the word of God, your kind conduct, your, your actions may win them over without you saying a thing. For when they observe your pure godly life before God, it will impact them deeply. Yeah. Deeply. Listen, We're not trying to excuse any bit of pain and any bit of heartache that you're going through because somebody that you said vows with, for better or worse, decided, no, when the worst gets there, I'm out of here. Or when I I see something better over here or I just don't feel like being there anymore, like I'm just gonna check out. We're not trying to diminish any of that. We're just saying this, don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. And you can play out the worst case scenario in your mind, and many of you probably already have, let's be honest. And I promise you, God will be at the end of that every single time with open arms, ready to to heal your hurting heart, ready to tell you that your best days are not behind you, that he still has a purpose for your life because he is faithful and he is good. We're gonna do prayer at the end today for anybody. And if you need some prayer, like, We're just going to open it up for you to come down here. And we're going to lay hands on you and just say, God, you're the healer. You're the hope. Where else are we going to go? We're going to look to you. Amen? Amen. Now, the reality is relationships take work. Can I get a good amen? amen? Like a lot of work. Some relationships take more work than others. Okay, some of you with multiple kids, you, go, you know that one, one of those kids takes a little bit more work than, than, than the other kids. Some of y'all with, with difficult friends that love the drama. Come on, anybody got some drama friends in your life? Like they love the drama, but you love them. And so like they're a little bit more work, but they're, they're, they're worth it. And then some of you, like some of you didn't marry an angel like I did, you know? So it's like you got to work a little bit more. Like when, when she fell out of heaven, like it's just like <laughs> a little heaven dust still on her. But relationships take work. Marriage is hard. Paul actually writes this. Listen to this in 1 Corinthians 7, 28. But if you do get married, hey, you haven't sinned. It's just that I would want to spare you the problems you'll face with the extra challenge of being married. And all the married men said, amen. You better not have said anything. You should have looked confused right there. Like, I have no clue what Paul is talking about right now. My marriage is incredible. It comes with problems. Living with somebody, being in that, in that context of that relationship, like, like fights are gonna arise. Like we're not here th- today looking at our marriage saying we never fight. We fought last night. It was her fault. We argue, it happens. Like this is real, but how do we deal with it in the process? And so that's what we wanna kind of walk you through. We're gonna give you five practicals and we're gonna try to have a little bit of fun with this first one. And so I think Thomas and Brandy are gonna join us. So come on, y'all give them a hand as they come up on the stage right here. Has anybody ever played this game called Pie Face? Now, there's different versions. Um, This one is a little bit more intense version than I've ever played before. Y'all can stand behind here. Um, Rebecca, I actually thought it would be really cool if we changed it up a little bit, and so we're gonna change this up on the fly. Um, But the whole purpose (laughs) is here that, um, you go on that side, because this is the girl and this is the guy. Yeah. The whole purpose here is that somebody is gonna get going to get hit in the face with some whipped cream. Um, and we were going to use a pie, but I don't know how that hand would hold that, uh, hold a baked pie. Um, so here's, here's what it comes down to. Okay. Um, 
in a marriage, when, when you're fighting about something, uh, you ever been in an argument, and, and this goes for any relationship, okay? You ever been in an argument, and you're arguing about one thing, but then all of a sudden, somebody reaches in the past. Come on, that's our first practical. Don't bring up the past in an argument. And they reach back a year, maybe three weeks, maybe seven years, like when you first started dating, and he took you to Burger King on your first day. Well, you, I should have never married you because of Burger Like. And they reach into the past, and, and all of a sudden, now you're arguing about something that you didn't even initially start arguing about. And then you start saying stuff. You start arguing, and, and I'm going to be Thomas, and Rebecca, you can be Brandy. And, and you start saying stuff, and Thomas is looking at her, and they were arguing about money because that's usually how arguments start. But then all of a sudden, Thomas is like, you're acting just like your mom. Why would you say that, bro? At least I'm not acting like your mom. Whoa! And she comes back like this, and then, and then, or, or you, you, maybe you shift the argument, and it's something completely, so it's kind of money, and it's like, well, you waste money, because every time you go to Target, you come home with a new shirt. At least I don't waste money on the Jags. Oh. That was below the belt, man. That was a low blow, dude. Come on. Come on. Yikes. So now you're arguing, okay, faces down, get in position. Now you're arguing, and what you're, this game right here, the purpose is this. You have to try to hit this button faster than they're hitting their button because it'll shift. The farther you hit it, it'll shift to her side when Thomas hits it, when Brandy hits it. So you're just, you're just boom, boom, boom. You're going back and forth at each other because you're bringing up the pass. And so come on, on the count of three, just start tapping your button as fast as you can. Ready, set, go. Y'all cheer them on. Go, 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 go. Oh, boom. Got them. Y'all give it up for these two. Come on, awesome. It wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad. Y'all good. You're good. I'm going to put this down over here. <laughs> Rebecca was like, are we going to do that? I was like, no, we're bringing other people they're up here be, to do they're that. They're going to be like, fighting about that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, you got you to gotta be careful when you're, when you're arguing that you don't, you don't bring up the past. Okay, that, that's not, it's not going to help the situation. Can I get a good amen if you know amen. what I'm talking about? All right, second one is this. Oh, I'm second. Okay, cool. Thanks. No name calling. Yeah. This, this is huge for us. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. This, this, is, this is my girl, my boom, my... There is no reason I should ever call her a name that is degrading. Because that will make her feel like trash. Because my words are the most powerful words in her life. And the moment I bring a name that will tear her down, I have no, you, you have no idea, no idea how much hurt that brings into somebody's life. Yeah. Next one is don't argue when your spouse is already upset. And you might think like, oh, that's not really a big deal. Come on. Like if she's a little salty already, guys, come on, give her some space. And the same thing for us ladies, like don't, don't, don't throw salt on a wound. If somebody's already wounded and hurting, give them some space so that you can come into an argument level-headed, calm, with peace, and actually have a good conversation, not when you're already heightened and frustrated. And this really applies to our marriage because, like, she just needs, like, time. Like, I want to fix it, like, I want, or I want to keep arguing. She just needs a little bit of space, and so I just have to give her space, let her, you know, realize that she was wrong and, and calm down and everything. <laughs> Next one is this. Th- this is huge. Avoid raising your voice. So, so the frustration builds. Somebody says something. Somebody does something. And now you're upset. If you can keep the, the, the argument, the fight at this level. Hey, when you said that to me, when you did that, hey, man, why did you spend so much money at Target? Like, I checked the account while you were there just to see where you, like, if you can keep it here, avoid raising your voice. It'll keep that argument from escalating. Like, you are you with me? Yeah. Shake your head if you know what I'm talking about. Very difficult because in the moment that, that frustration sets in, you just want to go. Try to avoid. Yeah. yeah, don't go to bed angry. And the Bible is super specific on this. God says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. When we go to bed angry, it just stews, it festers. And I don't know about you, but if we go to bed and we're, I'm frustrated to him, I can't sleep, I have a restless night, and then I wake up even more angry than I was when I went to bed. So stay up all night if you have to. Give her some space, give him some space, stay up all night, but deal with it in real time and in the moment so that when you wake up in the morning, you are waking up refreshed and ready to hit a new day, not dragging yesterday into today. 
So those are five practicals. Now we want to speak to your heart and give you just some very spiritual things that, that God has taught us. Um, but before we do that, I want to share a quick verse with you. Proverbs says this, it's better to live on the corner of a roof than to share a house with a nagging wife. Okay, like literally, I'd rather sleep on the corner of my roof than, than have a nagging wife. So if you're a nagging wife, like, come on, let's go. And, and I couldn't find a verse um, for, for, for the women, like, for, so I just made one up. It's from the book of Second Adam, okay? <laughs> so it's better to have hemorrhoids than live with a husband that's a jerk and thinks he needs to be right all the time. Amen. <laughs> two spiritual ways, two spiritual ways to fight fair. First one is this, don't fight to win an argument fight to resolve it. We're not fighting to win. We're fighting to resolve it, to dissolve it, to end it. I love how Ephesians 4, 3 says this, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. This was my problem the first seven years of our marriage. I fought every argument to win it. Because I didn't want to be wrong. Because I was too proud. And what I realized this, and I shared this last week, if, if I win the argument and I hurt her in the process, I lost. Every single time. God didn't call me to, to win every argument. He called me to love my wife. And so may God stir something on the inside of us to where we treat our spouses in the most God-honoring way, where peace is the center of our home, where unity abounds. May our friendships be centered on unity. We're not arguing to be right with our friends. We're not arguing to be right with our kids or our parents. Come on, we're fighting to resolve. Like, all right, a fight has arisen. It's there. We're gonna fight to finish it and, and, and not let the devil grab another foothold into this relationship. Yeah, and I'll just add that I really had to learn to believe the best about my spouse, to believe the best about him, or even in friendships, to believe the best about what somebody about somebody else when we enter into conflict. So instead of going in and saying like, you know, I mean, he knew what he was doing, or she knew just what she was doing. When we go in on attack mode, right? Attack mode is like this. You got your hands up, and you're ready to fight. You're already feeling defensive. And when you're in attack mode, you hit below the belt, and you throw out accusations, and you attack people's character. But if we go in as partners, as teammates with our friends that we want to fight to resolve things, we lower down, right? And then we begin to fight fair with one another, and we choose to turn from that attack mode instead and say, I'm not in this to win it. I'm in it to resolve it Amen. with one another. And a key part to remember this is point number two, which is remember who you're fighting against. Remember who you're fighting against. The Bible tells us in John 10:10 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So that's what he wants to come and do in our relationships, in our friendships, in our marriages. That's who we're fighting against. It's not, it's not against each other. We're fighting against the enemy. How many of you have been fighting with your spouse or a friend and you can't even remember what you were fighting about? Mm -hmm. You're going round and round and you're arguing and we've had arguments sometimes where I'm like, we have been talking for an hour. I can't even remember what, we, what this started or what the point is or now we're not even fighting about what, what we started fighting about because the enemy comes and he brings chaos and he brings confusion and he brings disunity. And before you know it, you have no idea what you started with, but you, now the devil is in the middle of this whole fight just stirring, stirring the pot. You have this small disagreement. He uses that and he feeds off of it. So it's important when we're fighting to slow down, to take a breath and to remember and acknowledge it out loud. We do this, and you're like, that's, that's so cheesy, but we do. We're like, this is spiritual. Like, this isn't just about you and I. This is about the enemy coming to divide our relationship, coming to step in. And so we speak that out loud. We become slow to speak and listen to each other. I heard Rick Warren say this, and maybe he wasn't the first one, that God gave you two ears and one mouth because he wanted you to listen twice as much as you speak. If you can choose to listen to the person that you're fighting against, you can, you're, you're not just hearing their words anymore. You're starting to hear their heart. And for me, I had to get past like her saying something, well, like you did this. And, and then I would take it personal and go, well, well, I did that because well, you do this and you do. No, no, I need to hear her heart. Why, why is she really hurting? Why, what, what is it? 
And if we can stop, guys, I'm talking, I'm talking to the men for just a second because I, I don't know how you women operate unless you're, you're like me. If we can just stop in the middle of an argument, step back and go, that's my best friend. Like my best friend. Why would I want to argue with her? I, I want to build her up. And I got to the point, you ready for this? Come on, I'm going to set some guys free up in this place today. Even if I know I'm right, I don't have to put my foot down anymore. I can just step back and go, I don't need to argue with her. I, I, I actually think I'm right in this one. But I don't have to prove it because I, I just want to love her. Changed our marriage. Nine times out of ten, because it ain't every time. She comes and apologizes. And she'll say, hey, you know what? I was wrong. And on that one time that she doesn't apologize, guess what? I can forgive her without her even having to say sorry. And, and I'm telling you, that's powerful. You know you can forgive people. If they'll, they'll never say sorry, you can still forgive them. And it has changed everything. And here's what I know. I felt this in my heart this morning. The devil is out to destroy marriages. He's out to destroy godly friendships. He's out to destroy families. He wants to drive a wedge between parents and kids. Hey, he's out to destroy churches. I see it happening in our own church. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Come on, we're family in here. Well, you did this and, and, and you said this. Come on, we gotta fight for unity. Because it matters. Because it's important. And I'm going to look. If, listen, th th we do this. I told you this. That Rebecca and I will be arguing. And I'm telling you, 95% of the time, it is my fault. She is incredible. And I will have to just look and go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this is spiritual. I know I'm being a doofus right now. But this is spiritual, and we're not going to let the enemy come in any longer. We're going to fight. We're going to take ground. Like, you're going to try to drive a wedge? No. So, devil, why don't you crawl back into the hole that you came from? Because you're defeated, and you are not going to get in on this relationship. He ain't going to get into our church. He's going to try. But we got to fight against him. Some of you, you got in a strange relationship right now. And the devil has, has driven a wedge. Come on, he is defeated. So let's proclaim the victory. Let's fight for unity. Let's fight for peace. Let's forgive. And let's God bring some healing. How many of you know God wants to bring some healing into your heart today? Thanks for watching today. If you'd like to continue the conversation, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Instagram. If our church has had an impact on you and you'd like to support what Jesus is doing here, you can do so by going to rise-church.com slash give and select the giving option that best suits you. Thanks for watching online and have a great week.